Hello everyone, my name is Yevke. One of the key features of the new Epson EV110 series is the GPI support. GPI stands for General Purpose Interface. This function allows you to connect external devices such as sensors, buttons, or switches to the projector by using a USB cable to receive the input signal. In today's episode, I will be going through how to connect and configure GPI external devices for EV110 series. Using the GPI functions, you can set one of the following commands to the projector. Power on or off the projector. Enable or disable AV mute. Start or stop playing your playlist from the favorites list. Source select to switch the image source. And light source mode set to normal or quiet mode. You can use two external devices in a single projector at the same time and set a command for each of devices. To connect the external device to the projector, first, connect the USB cable to your external device's output port. Refer to your external device manual for more information. Then, connect the other ends of the cable to the projector DZ out or GPI in port. You may need to customize the cable so that you can connect it to the GPI import of the projector. Alternatively, you can purchase and use a compatible connector that is commercially available instead. When connecting two external devices, connect device 1 to USB pin 2 and device 2 to USB pin 3. The projector is only able to supply 2 amperes of power. For devices that require more than 2 amperes, you will need to use a separate power supply and connect it directly to the external device. Once the device is connected, we can now configure the settings on the projector menu. Press the menu button on the remote control. Select Extended and press Enter. Select DC Out or GPI in Settings and press Enter. Under the setting, select Always On and On. This will enable both the DC Out and GPI in Settings. Do take note that when the GPI setting is enabled, the standby mode setting is automatically set to communications on. It will be gray out and cannot be selected. This is because the GPI signal must be monitored even when the projector is powered off. Next, select GPI 1 settings to set the first device and GPI 2 settings for second device. GPI info allows you to check the operating status of the external device. Under the GPI 1 and GPI 2 settings, you will need to select the operations for the each of the signal statuses. Select low to high when the device is triggered and the signal exit two folds. Then, select one of the operations to be executed when the device is in low to high state. Alternatively, select high to low when the device goes into an untriggered state and the signal falls below 0.8 volts. Then, select one of the operations to be executed when the device is in high to low state. If you select Start or Stop Playlist, you will need to select the target playlist from the favorites list. If you choose Source Select, 
you will also need to select the target source in the source setting. When the two external devices are connected, you can select combinations to set the operating conditions. Select none to always start the operation set in GPI1 settings regardless of the GPI2 signal. Select GPI2 low to start the operation set in GPI1 settings when the GPI2 signal goes into an untriggered state and signal falls below 0.8 volt. Select GPI2 high to start the operation set in GPI1 settings when the GPI2 signal goes into a trigger state and signal exit 2.0 volt. If you need to add a certain amount of time until the selected operations is executed, select hold high or hold low. When the device signal is maintained continuously for the set time, the operations will be executed. You can select from 0 second to 30 minutes for the hold high and hold low settings. For example, if you want to stop the content after the low state of this device has continued for 20 minutes, adjust the settings to hold low 20 minutes. On the other hand, set the hold high to 1 minute. If you want to wait for 1 minute before playing the content, even if the GPI sensor is already triggered. Once you have completed all the GPI settings, press the menu buttons to exit. Please take note of the following limitations with the GPI operation. GPI signal changes are not accepted during projector warm-up and when switching sources. If password protections at power on is enabled, the protect screen will be displayed. You can use execute and release AV mute settings when you don't need to play the content from the beginning as the playback continues even during the AV mute. Start playlist will always play the content from the beginning. Playback from a specific position is not possible. Stop playlist cannot select the playlist number to stop. GPI signal will not be accepted when the OSD menu is displayed. Now, let's try to configure the GPI. I have a projector and a switch button. When someone presses the button, I want the GPI to start playing Playlist 1 safe on my SD card. If I release the button, the playlist should stop. To set this, turn on the GPI 1 setting. Set low to high to start playlist. Select playlist 1 under favorite playlist. Since I only have one switch button, we need to set the combinations to none. There is no requirement for additional time before it starts playing this content, so hold high can be set to 0 minute. Then set high to low settings to stop playlist. Lastly, set combinations to none and hold low to 0 minute. As you can see, the Epson GPI function is very simple and easy to set up. You can now do simple interactions using external devices. I highly recommend utilizing these functions for your digital sinus applications to elevate your end user's experience. Thank you.